Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day, the big issue. And in the studios, I have Laura Joyce Bar Mukhtari. She's a former aide. She's an aide, special aide to former president John Dramani Mahama. Nanaya Chimpim Janto is also here, the general secretary of the CPP. And Akusia Menu is a deputy CEO of the National Youth Authority. Now, let's talk about the Agri Ministry mm. and what is happening at the moment. In fact, you heard the Agri Minister speak in Parliament, and of course, he did mention that. The prices of foodstuffs should not be as high as we were experiencing a few weeks ago, and that it was because the middlemen, the market women, the traders were the ones who were profiteering by increasing the prices, um, you know, exorbitantly. But in actual fact, he was going to ensure that some food produce would be brought to the Ministry of Agri that would be sold at very moderate prices. So it started. And after a few days, they have moved the planting for food and jobs markets to Makola markets. Yesterday, it was very chaotic in the market. Well, if you can just put up some pictures from the market for us to see. This was how, um, you know, packed the place was with women trying to buy some plantain. Um, it doesn't look like there was actually a plan as to how to go about it clearly because there were people pushing each other, trying to, to get the best yourself. part of the deal. And many questions have come up as a result of that. How sustainable is this new PFJ market? How long do they intend to run this? And especially wow. when we have harvesting times um, in a year, when there's really no harvesting time, what measures have we put in place to ensure that we'll still have all year round food um, availability? Of course, yeah. Yes. What do you say? I mean, I'm trying to understand how we suddenly moved from the Agri Ministry to the market and whether there was even a plan as to how to manage this so that everyone gets to buy their produce without necessarily making it look this chaotic. Um, um, Bella, thank you. Before before I actually move yeah. to this, there's something I need to correct, which has been said multiple times over, like literally in over a year, mm. about government having misreported to the IMF. Now, if there is if there's anything to be said, I believe that it would have been a treasure of evidence for um, the NDC to prove this. It's just unbridled lies. It was told in a manner which actually got the IMF country representative at the time, mm. Albert Tunamama, to actually speak to the issue that in no way has Ghana ever misrepresented to the IMF. And this is what happens when we sometimes throw things in the air and say that, you know, um, the perception alone carries enough weight to pin somebody down as having done something wrong. It's never happened. This government has never misreported to the IMF. What, however, does exist, though, is that Ghana has paid a fine in 2001 mm -hmm. to the IMF for a lie told. Ghana paid um, a, a, a whopping $36 mm -hmm. million, dollars, okay, fine to the IMF for misreporting on an earlier loan. This was um, a legacy crime mm -hmm. which happened in the um, NDC era um, under Jerry John Rawlins, where after um, President Kufo took over, the IMF in negotiations with them said, you know what, we are, you are due for something else. However, something did happen in the mm. previous government, and this is a fine you have to pay. Okay. So if, there, if anything exists in a form of rep, uh, misreporting, it exists in 2001 when President um, John Ejekum Kufo's government under the finance minister of Dr. Akuto Osei, who my, um, my, my auntie here has actually, you know, um, hailed him this morning. Mm -hmm. He disclosed this to Joy FM and explained that although Ghana is expected to receive some trenches, it, however, has to pay the fine because of misreporting. There is no medal for misreporting for this kind of So there's government. never been, not it's even in the been. IMF article it's for documents of their imagination. that said that they about some 2.8% of GDP of the energy single platform of the energy Mama has spoken sector. To this. It's not true? It is not true. Even with this um, censure sitting, um, it came up again. Yes, it did. And um, um, a member did. of parliament in corrected fact, it. In fact, the article for documents mentioned that about 2.8% of GDP of the energy uh, sector. finance sector so, uh, cost in the ESLA bond. Yeah. It was reported below the line yeah. in 2019 yeah. because they saw the That's energy right. cost as yeah. debt amortization. It has not been. That's not it true. Is not, it is it not is true fact. that the IMF has alluded to the fact. fact that this government has misreported. I haven't seen any document or article to that effect. Now, moving on to the agri minister. Okay. Um, well, we'll wait for the finance minister to come and answer some of these on questions Friday, on yes, Friday anyway. But yes. this is what is in the IMF Article 4 document. And so let's wait and see. But let's talk about agri ministry.
um, you know, there's something about planting for food and jobs where most people feel like there's a deviation of from what it was meant to do. Mm. If you take the five modules or five targets that the Agric Ministry sets its sights on, first was planting for food and jobs, mm -hmm. there's planting for exports and rural development, there's um, greenhouse technology villages, three of them exist mm. currently, there's rearing for food and jobs, and there's also um, agriculture mechanized one second, mechanized services. Okay. Now, when it comes to planting for food and jobs, it is not just to just produce, it's to provide access, marketability, bridging farm gates to consumers. Mm -hmm. Now, in between, one of the things that has um, come up, in February of this year, plantain moved from 20 CDs a bunch mm -hmm. to 80 CDs. Mm -hmm. We saw reports of that. Now, there was an uproar on cost. And again, when you look at the cost of items, especially in Greater Accra, the inflation, food inflation prices for Greater Accra is highly, um, is higher than compared to other regions. Mm. In doing the research, some media houses showed the, the, the profit margin that traders were putting on um, food items. Mm. It, it raised a question of, um, it, it became almost a morality issue, an ethical issue, or at what point do you put prices? Government should start regulating food prices and whatnot. So we also saw um, food getting rotting, vast amounts of food, and people felt, you know what, why shouldn't there be some sort of reprieve? Why can't there be a measure to, to bring um, food closer to the people that are actually asking for it. So a great ministry decided that, you know what, let's find a way to make this easier. We cut food to a location and then um, we'll have people come for it. Also, there'll be a, a cut-off point for how much people can get. So it's not like you're going to buy wholesale from them and go and sell again, it becomes an issue. Now, what is happening now is not... In, in a certain form, it's, it's happening in other countries. Mm. There's rationing happening even in the UK. There was a time that you saw that you couldn't, even down to a basic item such as toilet paper, you couldn't get buy more than two rolls or whatever. Now, the question of was it necessary, when it was first um, mentioned or when the idea first dropped, there, were, there was cynicism that it's not that bad for people to even make it seem like the ministry has to do this but what did we see in the first attempt which was on 11th of november mm. within minutes or it, food was finished mm -hmm. and people were saying we can't drive all the way to the ministry in fact some communicated that it was a horrible idea to turn the ministry into a marketplace because it's a place yeah. of office um, it's a place of work so find other outlets to do this and, and i thought that was a good idea because i don't see why i have to drive from let's say tema to a ministry just for like planting and whatnot so find outlets across the area. Beyond what we first saw was planting, and um, I think it was primarily planting. Plantain, and then they added yam yeah, the next day. Yeah, they yam. They're not going to add rice and vegetables. Mm. I think that, by and large, is, a case, is there a case for doing this? Mm. Yes, there's a case for doing this, because now you're getting planting that you were previously buying for 40 CDs, 60 CDs, at 10 to 15 CDs, which is a great reduction mm. from what you've seen. It means that... Indeed, there, is, there should be a mechanism to distribute food better and also reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, my big sister said was like, you know, it's, oh, Russia and Ukraine, what is happening there? There's splinters of uh, the, um, shards of bombs and whatever happening. Fact is, it is captured and it's continually, mm -hmm. it's continually being said. Um, no, the impact of the Russian-Ukraine war mm -hmm. is the most devastating thing that can happen to low-income um, countries, especially in Africa, coming on re trying to recover from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Imports of certain basic items is going to go up. We are not producing those items here. Even when people try to produce those mm -hmm. items, the cost of production is not as, the demand for it is not as high for them to break even and make even a profit. So there's no point. Have we made cost of production much cheaper for a lot of these people because that is where we should be tackling the problem yeah. from. Cost, you don't make cost Not of production providing cheaper food to for these people, people in the markets. When you're when you're starting production, there's a there's a there's a startup line where you need to get to to actually meet um, um, cover your overheads before you turn a profit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in a in a period of one or two months. Sometimes it takes at least a year. You've had six years. It. 
Um, but it's, the government is not just merely into production. Government set out um, one industry wealth factory, and people mm -hmm. moved into one D one F. As of now, I don't even buy um, processed tomato imports. There's there's a, a company Primo. I don't even know them. They mm -hmm. do tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, and it's the finest form ever. It was costing just about you know a tin of it was just under. I think it was 20 CDs or 22 CDs. You buy the whole box. And it can last quite a while, too. Mm. So That's because you can afford it. 20 <laughs> no, CDs is quite that expensive for someone who cannot afford it. Just for tomatoes. Yes. 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 Then, again, yes. Yes. then again, yes. then again yes. it's not tomatoes. It's, it's a tin of tomatoes. It's a crushed tomatoes in a big... It's in a big what, what, yes. But that's, you can use that's it for above food. minimum yeah. wage. Yeah. Yeah. It's 20 CDs. Um, yeah. Above minimum and wage. When we talk about minimum wage, we are protecting the vulnerable, literally. Minimum wage doesn't cover you and I. I guess it, but if you say that, the vulnerable calculating. are also watching at people this point. People are using so if you say 20, 20 CDs. Um, if we are, we are talking about the vulnerable, it will surprise you that they are so hard up, they might not have time to watch. They're trying to miss their day-to-day. You, -day. Never know. you so never would have know. conversations for know. them to protect them. No, but the least watch. thing that, the, the last thing we could say, though, is that when you see the intervention by the ministry, as dismissive and as cynical as we can be about it, it's proved a point that, indeed, there's food to be catered to various points. There are people that want th these foods at a certain cost. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we need to look at the conversation again on whether we need to set a certain ceiling price when it comes to food. Now, Guta is having issues with the, with the intervention. Why? Because the consideration is that it is turning... Um, the masses against traders. Why is it turning the masses against traders? Because the conversation comes again that are you unduly taking advantage of what is purported to be and what actually is a difficult time? But you should have been liaising with the traders so that instead of allowing them to be and, the ones to I, I bear the cost I of transporting the I do not believe that produce, conversations have been to be had on this. Conversations have been, have been had on this. Okay. Co um, conversations as to reduce the prices of mm -hmm. goods and services from um, um, products, as has been said. It's, not, it's, it's, a it's a daily conversation. And if we, we talk to you to reduce your prices and you're not reducing the prices, even when you talk about... Day but you have the chance basic... to now bring it into these markets. Why did you not bring it to the traders and tell them that this is how much we're bringing it to you? So you cannot also go beyond a certain point. At least let's try that to manage... That is price control, which is not as we speak. Well, they are that complaining that actually... cost of transportation Bella, is why they are increasing Bella, what, what, the prices what do you of food want, produce no, on the do, market. What do you want to... What, what actually do you want to see happen? Mm -hmm. That we set a price and tell traders that, you know what, we are selling this to you, don't go beyond 30 CDs, and we expect that they will stick to it. Is that what we expect to You see? don't think that that's or, possible? I, I did, Who's I the policy maker in this case? It's a great it ministry. If it was possible, we would have heard the trader say that, you know what, don't bring food items, whatever. We have the food items we are going to sell. There's, there's conversations have been going on repeatedly about the fact that Ghanaian traders are looking at um, a high margin on small volume instead of looking at putting small margins and moving larger volumes to make up in terms of profits. The question is, do people need food? We've seen evidently that they do. Can they not grow can, their own food? Should we not be encouraging them? And, and at this point, let me just bring can, Nanaya in. Can we not grow their own food? The people going on. to buy the, so their products. So one of the objectives no, of the Agric Ministry... Hold on, let me, that's what I'm saying. Okay. One of the objectives of the Agric Ministry is to encourage backyard farming. At least to a large extent, people should be able to feed themselves so that when it comes to the pricing of food stuff on the market, at least they can provide some of them on their own and they can go and buy the rest. We have not even encouraged that, but we are rather transporting these food produce to the market and saying, come and buy it. Should he not have encouraged that policy at this point when food prices are so high? Nanaya, please come in for me. I don't really have much time. I'm so sorry about that, but my music is already playing. Yeah. A signal that you guys find. You see, Operation Feed Yourself is a concept that was brought in by a champion. Yeah. But today, how many people have backyards? People live in compound houses. The vulnerable, they live in compound houses. Yeah. Let me just take a little time. I'm told your microphone is not working. So maybe let Joyce speak. I'm sure they'll fix it for okay. you quickly. Okay. Sorry, Joyce. But what, what do you say about this particular situation of prison? Feed yourself. I know Nana, I'll come and talk about it. But at this point, should we not be encouraged to have backyard farms? And you don't need to have a big backyard necessarily. We've seen how things have developed over time where you get even just a small wooden trowel and you can grow your produce in them. So you don't need to have a big compound in your home to be able to produce your own food. Bella, I've, I've told you... Um, well, not I rice. Have, we cannot uh, grow I, rice, of course. I but have, the tomatoes, the peppers... I have, I have already clearly outlined the fact that we are actually majoring on minus. That whatever we are doing at that Ministry of Agri is actually a totally disgraceful approach that the Ministry of Agri has always had stalls in front of its building where they've actually been showcasing all sorts of products over the years. Mm. 
This is definitely not sustainable. And of course, when you take the things from here and you go out there, how much do you sell them for? The trucks that are cutting them all the way to the Ministry of Agri, how do we pay them? Is the Ministry of Agri telling us that they're doing all of these things also for free? They say they're so not they investing any price? money into it. Well, we don't know that. As I said, we have not. You see, misreporting, lies, arrogant posturing, that is the order of the day. If we were more sincere, I'm sure that some of these things could be done better because you will broaden the consultation, you will broaden the conversation. And I think when you bring guests here, you should learn to control them and tell them to respect all of us. Whilst we are on the conversation, others are speaking their minds. I think that we must show respect when we come to these programs. It is totally uncalled for, for anybody to arrogate themselves, the power to sit and misbehave when we're on show. Let's be honest. This is part of the reason why we are here. The country has failed, Bella, that we are making our own citizens fall over one another, beat one another with police to stop us from buying plantain. One, it is not sustainable. It shows you the trajectory of where we've come from. I told you, from the president, the vice president, to the minister for finance, the only people benefiting are those walking in the corridors of power. And that is where the corruption, misreporting, underreporting, the lies. Look, go and find out how much the finance minister's companies alone have made in profits from the good people of Ghana. That should tell you why this government has totally failed. Okay. Whatever we do, however we do it, the government has deceived the good people of Ghana. And I think Ghanaians know. Look, there's them and there's us, and I'm sure you've watched it this morning. Thank you. Okay. Nanaya, please uh, land for there. us. Yes, but I'm saying that um, Operation Feed Yourself is a concept that was um, started by a champion. That maybe you have another time to talk about it. But you see, this government and all their appointees, they've forgotten about their oath of office, why they are here. And that is why we are here today. What they are doing at the ministry, at the market, is not sustainable. There's no plan to it. Look at what is happening. There's even a COVID spreader. People huddle to, yes, it's the COVID spreader. Do you get me? If there is any information about um, the market women inflating prices, there should be a stakeholder meeting with them. And you put it to them that we know that this is how much a, a, a bunch of plantain costs. Mm. So we believe that you are what? Profiteering. But if you do not do, on Julie, if you do not do that and you bring this to the market, what, what, what are you trying to prove? There okay. is the need for the government to have a plan. There is the need for them to be serious. They okay. should stop playing with us. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning on the big issue. And I've been speaking to lawyer Joyce Bar Mukhtari. She's a special aide to former President John Dramani Mahama. She's also a former Deputy Transport Minister. Uh, we also had Nanaya Chimpim Jantua, who's the General Secretary of the CPP. And Akosia Menu is the Deputy CEO oh God, of the oh National oh Youth God. Authority. We'll be having an exclusive uh, conversation, actually, with the former Mayor of Kumasi, Mr. Kojo Bonsu. He's already here in the studio. And so look forward to that. I'm sure he has quite a lot to talk about. But keep watching. This is TV3 New Day. Thank you so much for joining us.